Okay, Adam Helme, Tengku Mo, I, I love the fact that you guys are do- doing what you're doing. I, I love the fact that you've stepped into into the void and taken on this responsibility of trying to part, impart some financial knowledge to, I think, the people that need it the most, which is the young, right? Because obviously these are things you don't learn in school. Uh, you don't learn these things in university. We kind of go through our life stumbling through kind of like financial mishap after another credit card debt and all these kind of things. And then and then we emerge on the wrong side of 30 or whatever in certain cases. Then we realize we've got to get our acts together. So I love the fact that you guys are doing what you're doing. Um, maybe to start with um, you telling me why you started Hey Alfred in the first place. So what was the pain point? Yeah, uh, well, th- thanks for having us, Chuang. I think this is something great. Yeah, uh, thanks very much. Uh, we, 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 lo- we love to share our story as well. Uh, but I think all this started uh, with the fact that, you know, there was a rising increase in, um, in, in the media as well. People saying that the millennials are bad with money. Um, and we, we ourselves see that as a problem. So I think what really sparked was I was in Singapore um, about three years ago now, two years ago, two and a half years ago. And I got a call from uh, one of our partners as well, Sam. And he called me up one day randomly and said, hey, I've got, I've got some cash, but I don't know what to do with it. Um, so I told him, say, okay, did you try looking into this? And he said, whoa, this, all these things are super daunting and it's too complex for me to understand. I wish there was something a lot easier. Uh, so then that's essentially how the idea of Hey Alfred came about. Uh, you know, what we're actually trying to do here is make things a lot easier. Uh, so I moved back to Malaysia. I was working in Singapore for a while. I moved back to Malaysia, uh, got in touch with Adam and Sam as well and said, hey guys, you know what? I think there are a lot of people exactly in our situation right now. You know, we're, we're in our mid-20s. Uh, we're in the working force. We just started getting our paychecks and we really don't know what to do with money. Either we blow it, you know, on a weekend out or should we start looking into investing and how do we actually, you know, how do we actually grow this money? And the concept of money is... It's very complex to a lot of us. Mm. And I think it was at that time as well, uh, even for me, that I realized that, you know, when, when, when all these reports came out saying that, oh, you know, millennials aren't good with their money, it really struck a chord with me. It struck a nerve, right? It's, it's, it's interesting because you don't know sometimes if, like, until you're told that you're not doing something properly. Um, and my, I, I just realized at that point as well, my priorities were all over the place, right? So... Um, you know, I would think twice about, perhaps, you know, actually, I had to go out and get a TikTok stand for today's, uh, today's podcast. Uh, I was telling Mo, Mo, it's so expensive, you know, for me, it, like, it cost me like a hundred ringgit. And he was like, I, that's, that's why like you, you know, hundred ringgit, think twice, but then on the weekend out, you don't even think twice, <laughs> right? So, you know, it really, you know, that, that, uh, the idea of what we're, you know, spending on and, and that immediate gratification is really what we seek, um, and I didn't realize it was that bad until until you know until we started this actually. So yeah, yeah, that was that, that was a general. Yeah, yeah, it's um, I, I guess the the situation is different from for, from person to person, right? I mean, I, when when I was in, in that at, in that age, um, I was mm. I was from I'm from Penang, right? So obviously, you right. know, um, you you come to KL and then you you go you go to work, and then you realize that the salary that you get or what I got was not enough to cover expenses, right? So. Starting salary was like thousand seven or something. My rental was like I don't know five hundred bucks, right? And then my car installment was another like eight hundred bucks. Then you realize, shit, <laughs> not enough money because you still gotta eat, right? So ten dollars a day. Yeah. That's that's uh, that's three hundred bucks a month. So at the end, after net, after EPF and 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 so and and, and tax, um, you're underwater, mm. you know. And I couldn't save. I literally couldn't save money for the first, literally nine years of my working life. I couldn't. I was just paying bills. And I would say I was fortunate already because I had, I had a qualification, right? I had, I had a degree. A lot of kids, they come out and they, they can't even get a job. You know, they can't even get on the salary yeah. or the wage ladder for years. It's, it's a real situation today. Yeah, yeah. well, it, it, it's, it's, it's a global situation, if anything, Chuang. And, uh, you know, not just millennials of Malaysia. In fact, uh, we're seeing, you know, uh, everyone in the world facing the similar problems. But then, you know, it really begged us the question of whose fault is it really? You know that we're not taught about money um, as growing up. Even though you know money being part is, if in fact, if anything, is the most important thing uh, for your later life. Um, in fact, when you're twenties, that's when you have probably experience with a bulk of money. You get your first paycheck and stuff like that. You don't know what to do with it. So that's why we took it mm. upon us. Is if anything, it's our 
crusade. Uh, no one is paying us apart from we're paying ourselves to teach <laughs> or even in fact to impart some of the knowledge. And it all really begins with uh, mentality and that's where we are. Yeah. Um, this being the first episode of what we're probably going to be doing, yeah. we'd like to also put a disclaimer saying that we're not financial advisors. <laughs> Um, what we try to do is to try to sh uh, build a bet uh, to help you build a better relationship with your money. And that's all yeah. it starts. That's interesting. That's interesting. Like we're not. We're not. We're, yeah, we're not financial advisors. But if you want my advice, I'll give it to you anyway. I mean, <laughs> yeah, if, if it's not going to be any good if you want to if you want to take it on board, right? But yeah, I'm also trying to 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 bridge this gap between. It's not so much of us and them, right? Don't get us wrong. Like we are also you know, continuously facing our own struggles with our personal finances. I've, in fact, running it. Look, if you have no money, I would advise you not to get into startups, especially not a tech startup, because nobody knows what goes on in the background. But Mo and I are just moving money around every month, trying to meet payrolls and stuff like that, right? So everybody to, you know, has their own struggle and, and we're, we're living it as well. Yeah, so I don't know whether the situation today for young people is different from like, you know, a generation or two ago, like in my time. But what are the common mm. common money problems that young people face nowadays? Is it is it because they, they want to get on the property ladder but they can't? Is it because they want to uh, try and buy a car but they can't? Or they can buy a car but only a certain t type of car? Or are they like you know forced to use public transport? I mean, what are the common money problems that young people face today? Well, uh, from what we've what we've actually researched, uh, Chuang, is that we found out that really. The millennials, or even in fact the people our age, they don't really grasp the concept of money. There's a huge difference when it comes to money and currency. Um, a lot of people of today are chasing currencies. They're chasing the digits going up in your bank account. But they forget that the fundamental value, or even in fact the fundamental essence of money, is actually really your time and freedom. This will, you know, with more time and more freedom, it allows you for a better quality of life. And in fact, if anything, that is the wealth that you should be looking after and uh, looking to chase after. Meaning to say, you know, early retirement is something that if, if that, is, uh, that is something that you're building forward to. But most of the time, people are chasing material things where they think that a better car will give them, you know, uh, make them a lot mm. more happy. Uh, and, you know, more, more digits in their bank account would even, you know, make, put a smile on it. Yeah, I could probably put a smile on you on one day. Um, but it doesn't, it really is, isn't um, the happiness that, you know, we should be chasing. And that's something that we're trying to impart as well with our audience that we engage. Well, that is something that I understand because I am nearly 50, right? But it's something that I find so it... You don't look like it. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll buy you coffee after this, man. <laughs> but, but you know, the thing is, I understand it, but guys like your age, it's very hard for, 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 for guys your age to understand that because they want to they wanna go and get a BMW. They, they want to go and, I don't know, go and get an artisan coffee. They want to go, I don't know, to Hong Kong for a weekend. I mean, you know, in certain cases, right? Um, very few people have the concept about about the value of money and the value of time and health over the material goods like the latest iPhone. It's, it's, a very, it's a very alien concept to them. Yeah, so what we're trying to do here is that we're not trying to say that these are all the bad things. Capitalism is not really bad. You know, buying the latest iPhone is, is not necessarily a bad thing. It's, in fact, it's a good thing. But it shouldn't be your priority. And that's something that we are, that's something that we are trying to drill or even in fact try to share. You know, that the priority is, in fact, um, that your future, you know, uh, you should be thinking about the long-term effects of whatever that you're currently doing. So, yes, I would yeah. definitely agree with you. Trying to change someone's mindset is, uh, yeah. is very difficult, especially with our generation. You know, I, like, you know, at, at, 20, at 20, you don't want to start thinking about retirement, but you want to start thinking about that trip to Hong Kong, you know, or Disneyland or whatever it oh. is. But then... If you have your priorities set out right, meaning to say, okay, you know what, I've got an emergency fund and that's something that we try to do as well, is to, is to build up these different uh, fail-safe uh, or even in fact what we call uh, in search for financial jannah. Uh, we don't like to use financial freedom because, you know, it's not, it's not really free. It's, uh, uh, but what we want to be able to do is for you to be able to reach a, a safe haven mm -hmm. Or you to be not and think about how do I pay my TMB bill this month or how do I make rent, but to build different uh, different mechanisms or different tools for you to be able to lead that life that you actually want. Yeah, and I think that's a very important thing. Is yeah, I think that's a very important thing as well because uh, yeah, young, young people like us, we also lack a lot. We don't we lack direction. We don't um, we don't do a lot of goal setting. You know, I don't. You know, when you when you lack the goal, you 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 lack the ability to get you know, to where you want to get to. So I know what my goal is. My goal right now is to save up and to save up for what? To save up to pay my credit card, 
<laughs> you know, just a, that's that's me every month. It's, I find myself in that loop, you know. But um, you know, I, I'm I'm getting towards towards uh, you know improving improving my my current credit standing lah. But yeah, that that goal if, goal setting if, if, is very important. Yeah. If anything, we 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 started this uh, together. This Mo Sam and I, uh, we started this because we are in this situation as well. We understand this. This is not coming from another relationship manager or banker to tell you, hey, you got to save ten percent or twenty percent of your salary. What is twenty ten percent and twenty percent of salary? You know, uh, yeah. some people retire at a hundred thousand and they are fine until they 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 die. Some people say, no, my goal is a one million only, then I'll be happy. So it really is. It's 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 very individualistic in the sense where you it's your own goal. Nobody should be telling you what to do with your money, and that's why that's uh, essentially our core of what we do. We don't tell you to do what with your money. Instead, we take the data, and from which then we analyze it and give you insights to see, hey. You might be spending a little bit too much on groceries this month. You might be going out a little bit too much. Cut down on that. Uh, grab food. Uh, maybe try to cook. Uh, and it's up to it's up to you whether you want to take those insights or not. But at the yeah. end of the day, the insights are free. Yeah, that is something that I found interesting with with what you guys are doing because you get a lot of data that comes through your algorithms, right? What kind of things are you seeing? Uh, shocking things. Uh, in fact, if anything, uh, <laughs> well, we've we've been in operation for close to two years now. Uh, when we first started out, obviously there were challenges in terms of getting this data and stuff. Uh, but over the past year, we've grown our community to close to ten thousand users, uh, from which we can see that the millennials aren't really that broke. Um, what we yeah. have, what we are call you serious? asset. Yeah, not what kind of millennials are you, do you have on your, uh, on your <laughs> database? On the plan- yeah, so we can, I mean, this is something that we can share as well. I mean, the bulk of the millennials are between the ages of uh, 24 to 32. Uh, this is the bulk of the Hey Alfred users. And in fact, if anything, they have a uh, total asset, combined asset of more than 68 million ringgit out of the 10,000 users. One more time? 68 million ringgit. What? 68 million. <laughs> yeah, so they, they, exactly. Yeah. How do they have so much money? Yep, well, that's exactly it. But here's the kicker. They have about 200 over $1,000 in debt. Mm. What do you mean? So, so what do you uh, mean? Sorry, two, 200 over a million in debt. Okay, so, so their, their debt su- out, outstrips their, their asset Their debt ratio value. outstrips their asset ratio, yes. If you look at it, yeah, well, we're looking at maybe uh, a proportion of the users that have mm. a lot of savings are saved up. We're able to sync with you know, your EPF and your ESBs and stuff for, for us to be able to track as well. But their debt ratio is a lot higher than that. Uh, these are people swimming in credit card debts. Uh, even yeah. though we put up, we also allow users to manage their uh, housing loans and other personal loans for to be able to track. So if you really look at it, yes, sixty-eight million. Wow, a lot of money, but it's a lot of debt as well. Mm. And that just goes to show that across the board, right, that you can have money and be bad at it, and you can have no money and be bad at it too. Right. <laughs> so that what we're seeing actually is 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 that extreme luck. Whereby these people have money and they have they 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 could potentially live very well and achieve their goals, but for some reason they're not doing that. I, I find it astounding that the millennials on your um, database have such a high asset value. Is it a function of mm. of of basically maybe your 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 members subscribers are, 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 are urban middle class children, and they're not really yeah. like you know maybe Kelantan Terengganu kind of like Sabah you know kind of kids. Could that be one of the reasons? Mm. Yeah, well, we are fairly new, um, so uh, a lot of our target market is concentrated around the KL area um, and the urbanites, right? Predominantly, the app is in English. We have we have also released a Malay version of the app, um, so this is when we'll probably start going into uh, the more rural areas. Hopefully, you know, also out of the city. Um, but yeah, a lot of these ki- a lot of these are urbanites, and also they are they they're not Gen Zs, right? They're millennials, so they're probably onto their second and third job. Some of them are also having families; they will have a spouse. So this is why we're seeing maybe the income is a bit higher than what we would expect maybe perhaps from a typical um, fresh grad, right? So they've just, and, and these are the kind of people that are actually wanting to start taking care of their finances because why? Because now they actually have to. And now, again, unfortunately, it could be a bit little too late. Not late lah, but you know what I mean? It's, it's, they're only taking it on a bit later on. Well, I find it interesting because it, it doesn't matter, right? You, you could still be a professional in KL, right, Adam? And, and if, if you're 
um, if you can't pay off a credit card debt, you are still going to go through the same consequences <laughs> as the kid, you know, in whatever, you know, Getak Sangul in Penang or whatever. Do you know what I mean, right? Correct. Um, Correct. What would be the... In fact, if anything, the debt collector would be harder to find them. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, right? So what would be your, like, your, your killer financial management tips for, for the young, right? So let's just say five. Five well, I think yeah. Tips. We we first of all we uh, we like to advocate the fact that you know uh, you should be spending le- uh, lesser than what you get. Uh, that's fundamental. Sounds very easy. Sounds super simplistic, right? But it's hard to follow, and that's the biggest thing. That's and and it all boils down to your uh, mm. your relationship with money and your attitude towards it. Um, if you think that you know a three thousand ringgit paycheck. Uh, allows you to uh, pay a $1,500 installment on a BMW, then you're severely wrong. You, you're completely mistaken, you know, because if the BMW is your priority, then, you, you, you know, it's, you're pretty much screwed. Um, so, so I think that's, that's the most, that's, that's fundamental. Uh, you know, spending, spending less than what you get is, sounds mm. easy, but it's hard, really hard to yeah, follow. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, that's and putting what, it in simplistic terms as well, right, Mo? I mean, like, when you tell people to save, like, okay, I'll save. And they think, uh, you know, everybody thinks, oh, yeah, I know how to save. But they don't, but then, like, you know, it doesn't end up materializing, you know. It's, you need to know, okay, this is how much I have in, how much I have out. Write it down, right? So, sorry. Easy to yeah. say, love, so bro. Be, easy to say, man. Yeah, you know? exactly. Right? exactly. <laughs> and then, yeah. and then your, but, your mate calls you on a Friday night and says, okay, let's go, right? And then, bam, <laughs> you're 300 bucks down, you know what I mean? It's, Correct. Well, that's, that's pretty much how we've actually developed the Hey Offered app. Uh, if anything, we're trying to make it easier in terms of journey, in terms of managing your own finances. Um, what it essentially does is that, okay, we know how much uh, you know, you're earning and how much you're actually saving. So we get you to create actually a budget. And second thing is, is that if, in fact, if anything, is most important is to actually create a budget. And the budget is nothing but a plan for you to stick to, for you to be able to reach your goal. Now, that brings us to the second point where you have to be able to set these goals. Now, we, we, we have a lot of these multiple bank accounts. You know, we've got an RHB bank account, we've got an EPF account, uh, your, your ASB. Mm, your bills, but all, telco. Yeah, and, like, and all mm. these actually don't mean anything if there's no purpose to what you're actually saving for. So that's what we get our users to do, to be able to uh, visualize the money that they're actually saving. So, for example, okay, um, the money in my EPF is solely meant for my retirement and I'm not going to touch it. Even with this new program uh, where EPF is introducing or you can redraw and stuff like that, I'm not going to touch it because this is for my future self. This is for me when Mm -hmm. I'm at Chuang's age or even in fact when I'm looking to retire and that should be the priority. And uh, visualizing every single bank account that you have for a purpose, let's say for example if you want to save for that BMW, then, then start putting aside of it uh, and start actually saving because really it's, it's sweeter if there's mm. some sort of hardship. Uh, at yeah. the end of putting the your money in different places as well, I think that was an important point that more more brought up because then, you know, out of sight, out of mind kind of mentality, right? It's easy to save if you can't see it. Another tip that we also encourage our users to do is do something like a roundup. Let's say at the end of the day or at the end of the week, you have, you know, 6,091 ringgit in your bank account. Maybe take that 991 ringgit, put it aside into some, you know, put it aside so that you can't see it, so that it will accumulate, right? But also, I think an important point is to face your finances. A lot of people don't want to log into their bank account. They don't want to look at the balance. <laughs> I mean, it's the same with me. I know this for a fact. It's right? still pathetic, right? It's like, oh, so shit, I've only finances. got this much money, right? Yeah, okay, so, so, exactly. So tip- but then when you swipe your card, you don't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So tip number one, um, spend less than you earn. Tip number two, budget, right? Tip number three? Oh. Three number three is to visualize, actually, right. yeah, to visualize your goals, uh, to make sure that you know uh, the goals that you have and the money that you're putting aside actually goes hand in hand. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, you know, uh, assign every single digit to its purpose. Let's say, for example, my EPF is only meant for my retirement. My Maybank uh, high yielding account is only you know meant for my uh, yearly holidays that I'm gonna go into, and not touch it solely for the fact that these accounts or these bank accounts that you have, have a particular uh, purpose. Yeah. And step number four, like what Adam mentioned, is to face your finances. Uh, now, there's this thing called the, the ostrich effect, right? Um, what, what the ostrich normally does is that it, it dips their head into sand or into ground 
uh, when there's a horde of uh, threat coming their way. And that's what we tend to do when it comes to our bills, right? We, you, you don't want to tear open that credit card statement at the end of the day. In fact, I've never opened my credit card statement ever. You don't want to open the app as well. Same. Uh, I, I still, t- till today, I still don't look at my credit card account. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but if, if anything, I think, you know, everyone's very familiar with what facing your fears, right? Everyone say, oh, you have to yeah. face your fears for you to overcome it. Now, if you let money control you and if, if you let the fear of not having enough control you, then you're never going to get out of that cycle. You're always going to be enslaved to the fact that I'm not going to have enough. Uh, but it's up to you and you're, you're in that position to be able to make that change. And only you. Nobody can tell you what to do with your money. Uh, as many financial advisors as you can have. You know, I, I remember there was um, uh, some time ago, uh, we had a financial advisor and he was saying that, oh, okay, uh, you know what, good news. Uh, this year, oh, the whole market crashed and, you know, in fact, if anything, the S&P all went down by 30%, but you only lost 20%. I mean, <laughs> good news, right? <laughs> Just don't yeah. lose me money, yeah. man. You know, I, why precisely. am I your fee? Yeah, mm. exactly. But I think it's all on our owners and it's uh, no one else's fault um, and we should be taking responsibility of it. Because at the end of the day, it is your money. Yeah. And rule number five? I think one more one okay. more tip. Yeah, the tip number five is also... Uh, use Hey Alfred. One thing that... Yeah, yeah well, use Hey Alfred. <laughs> well, well, no, but, well, yeah. We, we try to sorry, break but it. also... Sorry, Mo, I'll, I'll just go uh, very quickly, sorry. Uh, yeah, but also I think... Uh, uh, what was the tip number five that I was thinking about now? I've lost my train of thought. Um, oh yeah, I think millennials also, we have, we have a very serious case of FOMO. I okay. think you can see right now that everybody seems to be jumping on the Bitcoin wagon. Um, and I would also say, you know, caution those people as well. Um, and remind it to myself and more as well. And that, uh, if you don't know anything about it, you're going to end up hurting yourself. So really equip yourself with the right knowledge, you know, um, don't jump on the bandwagon because, you know, my friend is making 20 X, you know, you know. And then, and you know, I, I'm here left out. You know, you jump in, you're gonna end up losing losing 20x. You know, as opposed to gaining. So, um, it's all well and good, yeah, to 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 want to be involved in it. But before you understand it, really, just you know, just be careful. Okay? You 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 have to have uh, Dior, right? Before you can uh, play with the big boys, you have to have Dior. Dior, What's Dior? And all the- Dio is do your own research. Uh, that's the most important thing. <laughs> that's the you one, know? man. That's uh, the one. D-Y-O-R. Yeah. So if anything, yeah. the, the fifth tip is to really invest in yourself. Uh, that's the most, uh, that's, that's the best investment that you could probably make. Sounds very superficial. I might sound like a grandfather right now, but I'm only 29. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's God, really you're so is, old. You're 29. Yeah. My God. <laughs> <laughs> really, yeah, investing in yourself is the biggest return that you're probably yeah. going to get. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So if you were to give one tip, okay, um, the, okay, because I, I presume you are at least um, tolerant of this whole FIRE concept to be financially independent and to try, try and retire as early as possible, right? If there was one tip that you would impart to people, uh, the secret to financial freedom, what would that be? The one, the, the one above and beyond everything else, the, the one rule that rules it all. Adam, maybe you you want to share yeah, what's I'm your your think, personal what's, rule? What's, yeah. what's what's one personal rule that I have to, to to well, don't have a credit card. I think, and for me that was a bit you know I got because okay, now w- 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 once you get yourself into debt, it's very hard to get yourself out of it. Like I mentioned earlier, right? I'm saving every month just to pay off my credit card. Now the problem with that is, let's say my credit card bill at the end of the month is three k. Right, I have saved three k at the end of the month. I've paid off my credit card. Now I don't have any more more money to last me that month. And so what I've put myself into is this repeated situation whereby all I'm doing is just make, making making ends meet every single month. Right. So um, I mean, I I I I grew up in a time where I suppose uh, you know I had daddy's credit card at one time. All right. So I was given it. I was given it, and then that was the facility I was given. But I think a lot of uh, younger people these days um, have other options. You know, they can go through GrabPay. They can go through, uh, you know, um, all these other mechanics uh, that allow them services without having to go through um, the backing system and get debt. Because all you're buying, sorry, all you're doing when you when you, when you you uh, go to the bank and get a credit card is you're buying into debt. Um, so, yeah, if you have the chance uh, to, to not um, take up any debt in your life, I know, again, easier said than done, 
Uh, but try and avoid it, I, I, I would say. Debt is something that, you know, I'm actually trying to now get rid of all my credit cards. And I've, I've done so quite success, successfully, but I do have the one that is left. Mate, so that would be my tip. La. I've been there before, man. It took me years to pay off 5,000 bucks. Yeah. It, was, it was worse there than childbirth, right? Not that I would know exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I saw your, your posting on Instagram, right? Um, what, what are you going to do? The five things you must do on your getting your angpao money, right? First thing is pay off, pay off a credit card debt. Very important. There you go. Yeah. What mm. about you, Mo? What's your one rule to rule it all? Um, I well, yeah, like what you mentioned, Chuang. I've I've been a uh, so called a member of the fire community for a very long time now. I I, I live on a very minimalist uh, lifestyle here. Uh, in fact, if anything, a little bit too excessive. In fact, I have two couches, so that's something that I have to get rid of. <laughs> are you kidding? Um, so you you are you a, are you a um. Are you a devotee of Matt Devella as well? Well, yeah. Well, Matt Devella has definitely influenced uh, some sort of way I, I've lived. Uh, in fact, if anything, um, I've been been following him for quite some time now. And what are, what all these guys are all saying is essentially a very simple thing. And I think this is something that we mentioned at the start as well. Is to live below your means, right? Uh, and it's to really understand that position. There's no point in in in, mm, you know, in, in, yeah. in 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 really owning something that you can't really afford to pay, and that goes back to uh, getting into debt and all these uh, other things, negative emotions. There's nothing wrong with uh, debt, but if an, in fact, if anything, uh, you have to be able to know the difference between a good debt and a bad debt. There there are times where you know all these guys also teach us where you know you how how you're able to change debt into an asset. So one of the things that uh, that we tried this as an experiment was uh, when I first moved back to Malaysia, I didn't have a car. Uh, I could have bought the car with cash that I saved up, but who wants to do that, right? You're going to be depleting your like oh half the life savings or whatever it is. Instead, but, yeah, yeah. Are there a lot of young people like your age that are more into minimalism nowadays, where they forego the car, they forego the apartment, they forego a lot of the luxuries? Because I mean, from where I sit, I see, I I see that the, the era of consum- conspicuous consumption is, is really with the millennials. But are there a lot of people that are the opposite of that kind of people? Um, I think, if anything, a lot more people are starting to look into it. Uh, yeah, we're going to be going in towards a, a, you know, a, a, a world phenomenon where uh, people might think it's hyperinflation, but I, I personally feel that we're going to be a bit of deflation. A lot of people are going to be hoarding cash. Uh, you know, buying into different asset classes for them not, and not spending. So, in fact, if anything, it's, it's always a cycle, right? And we're, we're in a cycle where from, you know, past few years, we've seen huge inflation. The ringgit has dropped against the US dollar and all this stuff. But now we're starting to see that, okay, a lot of people are starting to be more aware of this. They're starting to keep their money and they're starting to be able to, mm. you know, spend less and stuff like that because they know that, you know, this is not something, especially with this whole situation, the global situation right now, People then realize and say, "Oh no, I don't have six months of saving now. I just got laid off." Yeah, so more, I don't even, to- Yeah, I, I, I didn't even ask you what you were doing in Singapore. You, you sound as if you were involved in finance or, or in some way or another. Uh, well, in fact, if anything, <laughs> my background is not in finance Very at similar. all. Um, I, I am, I'm actually from an advertising background. I, um, but I was working in Singapore for a fintech company for a while. Um, and uh, I decided, you know what, I think there's a lot more people here that could use my help, and that's why we make it our own personal crusade to say, hey, let's, let's in fact impart these kind of things. Because at the end of the day, you know, where, where we leave, uh, we want to be able to leave a legacy, not so much of the cash in the bank. Yeah, yeah exactly, sure. exactly, exactly. Yeah. So this journey of financial literacy is very important to us as well, right? It's not just the glamour of having a startup, but we want to, to address a bigger topic and a bigger issue. And this, again, like Mo said, there's so many people out there who need our help. We need our own help. So <laughs> what more everybody else out there? Yeah, it's, it's, a good, it's a good thing that you guys are doing. It's an honorable thing that you guys are doing. And I know a lot of young people, 25, 29 years old, they're not doing a lot. You know what I mean? And I love the fact that you've taken this on. It, it's a hard life. Startup life is, 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 is a grind, you know? And you're trying to make salary. <laughs> Sometimes you can't pay yourself. I understand, right? It's tough. But I love the fact you're doing what you're doing. So good luck. Um, all the best in the journey. Thank you. And I hope you do impact a lot of people because that, that you know, that is an honorable thing to do in, in life. So good luck. Thank Thanks. you so much, Ron. Yeah. I think, yeah, I speak for both Mo and I when I say that very uh, pleased to be here and to speak with you for the first time. And hopefully we can do this again. Okay, Adam. Take care, fellas. Thanks so much for your time.